All right, welcome back to another session of Pellet Tech 101. So today, I wanna to just go over a few notes here on uh, one of the Harman circuit boards. Uh, they're four output uh, circuit control board. So part number on this is 1-00-05886. Uh, this is one of the most common Harman control boards that's out there. Uh, this particular board uh, is the replacement for like the Accentra, the Advance, the XXV, the P43, the P61A, the P68. Uh, fits a number of different models that are out there. And so when we, when we get a replacement control board like this in the box, uh, first off we are going to have our instructional pamphlet. This is really important. This is gonna let us know where to set the dip switches on the board. So over the years, Harman has had a number of different control boards that have been used in their stoves. And as we go to the latest control board here, there is going to be some settings that I must make sure that I have correct uh, prior to installing that circuit board. So we'll cover this a little bit more in just a second. It's also going to include new knobs and new shafts. Again, depending on the make and the model and the year, there are changes that have been made to the knobs and the shafts. And uh, so we have three knobs and then we have three shafts right here. Uh, as we uh, dig a little bit further, we'll actually come to the control board itself. So as we are handling the circuit board, we want to make sure that we're being careful with this, I guess, first off. Um, secondly, I want to make sure that this doesn't really interfere with any other electromagnetic fields. So uh, as I am uh, taking this out of the packaging, as I'm uh, getting ready to install this control board, uh, I want to make sure that I keep it away from uh, phones, tablets, computers, uh, uh, heavy magnets, anything like that that could uh, disrupt or cause interference here with the control board itself. Um, so as we're looking at the control board, and we do have a we do have an actual installation video of this control board that's up here on, on YouTube, so you can search our channel and find that. Um, but basically on the, what I like to call the front side of the circuit board, we have kind of our, our main pin Molex area where our, our wire harness Molex connection is going to seat. Uh, we have our uh, little holster here for our uh, ESP thermistor probe that's going to snap in to our port uh, right over there. And then right up here on the top, we have two prongs here, and these are for our room sensing probe. So the small probe that runs out of the back of the stove, uh, we have our two ports uh, right here. <coughs> on the back side, what I refer to as the back side of the control board, the most important thing we're going to look at here is the uh, dip switch settings. Uh, it's important to note that, again, there's been a lot of different control boards, a lot of different circuit boards over the years for various makes and models of Harman. Uh, this particular board, again, it's called the four output circuit board. It's also known as the platinum control board. Um, and it's important that we set up these dip switches according to the reference chart that's included with the control board. Uh, if I try setting these dip switches to the same as the board that I'm pulling out, there's a strong chance that that could be wrong and the stove will not function correctly. So, you know, there is, again, many different variations and versions of this board over the year. And as you get the newest control board replacement, most likely it's going to be different than the one that you currently are taking out of your stove. So, uh, extremely important that we set these dip switches correctly prior to installing the control board. So I'm going to try to bring this a little bit closer to the camera just so that you can see these dip switches. But we have dip switches numbered 1 through 8 uh, with a setting of off and on. So I'll just see if I can bring that up a little bit closer. You're able to see that a little bit closer. So again, we just have little switches numbered 1 through 8 that we need to set appropriately based on our make and model and year. So hopefully you're able to see that. One of the best uh, tools uh, that I like to use for uh, setting the dip switches on the control board is just like a little small precision screwdriver. Uh, flathead, this particular one is a Phillips, but it's small enough where I can stick it right in the little slot right here. And I can move these from on to off, or I can move them from off to on, just like that. I'm not forcing anything, I'm being nice and careful with it. 
That is how we adjust the dip switches. So as you review this particular chart right here that comes with the control board, this fits a lot of different models, uh, even some of the coal models uh, that Harman has out there. So it fits a ton of different models. Uh, it's going to let us know what the, uh, what the board part number is. It's going to let us know the revision of the control board. Uh, one of the most important things is that over the years, some of the models had a red ESP thermistor probe wire, and some had a black ESP thermistor probe wire. Uh, so it's important that we're inspecting the current thermistor probe. Uh, so the thermistor ESP probe is what installs in the exhaust of the unit, or the exhaust manifold of the stove. And so we do want to pay close attention to the, the color of that wire that comes off of that probe and plugs into the circuit board. Uh, that will make a difference on where we are setting one of our dip switches here. Uh, as you flip this over, it's going to tell you a little bit more information about the dip switches, uh, what they do, kind of some important notes right here, um, you know, just some overview information which can be really good to, uh, to review and go over. And then on the back side right here, it's going to have some diagrams. So again, based on the stove make and model, uh, as well as the year, the ESP probe color, it's going to give us an indication right here on what we need to do. Uh, there's also variances between ignitions. Over the years, uh, there's been some changes with certain models on ignition. So cartridge ignition, pressure ignition. Uh, and then manual ignition. So uh, anyway, uh, this is just going to give a really nice overview. So as you're picking out your make and model and what year you have and kind of assessing the igniter that you have in the unit, uh, you're going to be able to set this properly uh, prior to installing the stove. So that's the main thing here with the circuit board is uh, as you get it, make sure that you're handling it correctly. Make sure that you're setting your dip switches accordingly. Uh, based on the instructional sheet here and the model stove that you have. Uh, while you're installing this in the stove, absolutely make sure that the stove is unplugged from the wall. That's one of the most important things. Uh, and uh, take your time. Have patience with it. Be careful. Uh, again, we have our, our main ports here for our Molex, our ESP, and our room sensor. Want to make sure that all of those are in there and seated properly. Uh, in most of those stoves, you'll, you'll use the existing face plate uh, that's on there. And once that's in place, you're going to be able to uh, install your knobs and your shafts. So uh, the knobs, they just simply press in. It's a pressed fit right there. And there's two ways that they can be installed. So if you install it and the dial is not lining up the right way, you can just give it a 180 spin, put it back in there so that it is lining up correctly on that faceplate. So very easy to do, pushed fit. And then the knob itself, same thing, it's just a push fit on the one side, and that knob is going to be secured on there like that. So that is the basics uh, for the Harman 05886 control board. Um, many of the control boards are like this and do require proper setting of the dip switches. And again, my main point here behind the video is that with different revisions over the years, these dip switches are different uh, than what you are replacing with your existing board. So it's important that you're not setting the dip switches the same as the existing board that you're pulling out. It's important that you're taking a look at the new pamphlet that's included with the board and setting these dip switches appropriately to your make, model, and ESP Pro wire color. And that is it. If you have questions, concerns, comments, you need help setting your dip switches, whatever the case might be, we're always here. We're always happy to help. Leave us a comment here in the video, or you can shoot us an email direct. Uh, we're always happy to help. Um, and uh, we always guarantee the best prices and the best customer service. So uh, look forward to seeing you again soon on the next video. And feel free to visit pellethead.com. Thank you.